Man, remember the dark universe? Remember when that was the thing? Remember when we were all talking about uh, Universal's attempt at making their own Marvel Cinematic Universe, but of monsters, right? Remember this uh, completely famous photo of, of everyone together? We were going to sit Frankenstein with Javier Bardem, uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde with Russell Crowe, uh, Johnny Depp was going to be the Invisible Man, and that one girl from Kingsman, I, Sophia something i can't remember her name right now uh she was of course the mummy and then we have tom cruise right there in the middle uh and uh and then yeah that that whole thing uh that whole thing died when the, the mummy uh, got uh, 16 percent on rotten tomatoes and a 35 percent audience score and ultimately lost universal 95 million dollars uh, it, it was it was it was a tragic thing it was a terrible thing because uh, the dark universe was a cool concept it was a great idea i loved it i was all for it i was all super excited to see what was going to be happening to it. And then it went dead for a while because we were told nothing and we kind of figured it was going to be dead, but we didn't know if Universal was going to try to salvage it. But uh, no, this report came in here. Dark Universe, the shared universe for Universal Monsters dies at one. Coming in on January 28th, 2019. So just a little over a year ago. And even then that was followed up two days later on screen right here by why the Dark Universe reboot will be a success this time, the Dark Universe is dead. Long live the Dark Universe. Here's why Bloomhouse's Universal Monsters reboot is sure to be a success. And with that, we have The Invisible Man is coming out here in, I believe, just a week. And this is the first film in the revived Dark Universe world uh, that's going to be more on the micro-budgeted approach to these types of movies. Even though The Invisible Man is getting good reviews coming out of people who have seen it, I can't help but laugh a little bit because to me it feels like a ripoff of Hollow Man. Right? It does. It feels like a ripoff of Hollow Man. It just, like, it's like, oh, hey, the Paul Verhoeven flick with Kevin Bacon. Yeah, kind of similar, right? They're kind of the same movie. However, um, one of the one of the interesting things was uh, after The Mummy, the next movie coming down the pipeline was going to be Bill Condon's The Bride of Frankenstein. This was set to uh, star Harvey Bardem and Angelina Jolie. This was going to be the big one coming out. And actually, it was January 2019 was when it was originally announced to be released. And that, of course, died. Uh, and we have had, haven't seen anything out of it in a while until just two days ago when this story slipped through my fingers. But apparently Hollywood is still trying to put a ring on Universal's Bride of Frankenstein. And so they say here at the at the Hollywood Reporter or sorry, this is Variety. Uh, saying in the past year alone, figures like Oscar nominated producer Amy Pascal and freshman horror sensation John Krasinski have been quietly exploring ways to reimagine the skunk haired screecher for the Cineplex insiders familiar with the project told Variety, saying the property has been in the holding pattern since 2017 when Universal Pictures scuttled the planned constellation of films known as the Dark Universe after the failure of Tom Cruise's The Mummy. One of the entries in the cinematic universe that never came to pass was The Bride of Frankenstein standalone with director Bill Condon, Angelina Jolie, and Javier Bardem attached. But thanks to a new creative mandate at the studio for edgier and more affordable takes on their characters, including Dracula, Wolfman, and The Mummy, uh, this bride may walk to a th to walk down theater aisle soon, especially considering the first monster movie made under the guidelines, Elizabeth Moss's The Invisible Man, was posed for a $20 million opening at the end of February, a strong result given that it was produced under notoriously lean Bloomhouse Productions budget. And that is all true. Bloomhouse makes movies uh, on the micro budget, has for quite some time, and it's proven to be very, very, very successful. It has. He has done uh, good and very bad, actually. His new one, uh, Fantasy Island, comes out tomorrow, and it's not looking like that good. The reviews aren't really doing very good for it. Uh, Black Christmas, his one that came out in uh, uh, December, absolutely dead at arrival at the box office. Critics hated it. So he's had hit or misses, but uh, this one apparently is looking like it is going to be particularly good because Lee Wannell, the co-creator of Saw, is the one who wrote and directed this movie. His last film was Upgrade. So if you've seen that one and you like that one, the, the likelihood of you enjoying this is going to be pretty high. But Amy Pascal is really uh, who's going to be looking into this here. So it says the latest suitor for Bride is Pascal multiple sources have said, who just moved her overall production deal to Universal from Sony. She has floated properties by her former Spider-Man collaborator and director Sam Raimi and said two individual sources uh, familiar with the sources are said two individuals familiar with the conversations. That union is now unlikely because uh, Raimi is potentially going to go direct the Doctor Strange sequel. Uh, Pascal has also engaged screenwriter David Kep, 
who was involved in crafting the defunct Dark Universe pitch for Jolie's project. Kep has previously described his vision as a liberation tale about a female monster created for companionship who has quite the opposite in mind. Spokespeople for Raimi, Kep, and Jolie declined to, declined to comment on the matter. So think about that. Like, his story is a liberation story. It's not the bride being made for Frankenstein's, you know, oh, we're going to, like, you know, it's, it's she's not going to be, like, his, you know, his harem. She's not going to come to his beck and call. Uh, you know, she's there for, like, her own female liberation. And and actually, in today's today's society, that is something that might that might actually be, like, a hit, right? Because we've seen some stories like that coming out. But uh, when it comes to Pascal and Jolie here, this there might be a bit of a problem because during the 2014 Sony email hack, uh, there there were some disparaging things said about Angelina Jolie from Amy Pascal. Now, you got to remember, Pascal said disparaging things about a lot of people, but still, but still, that was something that was said and it can't be unsaid. It's out in the media now, but apparently Jolie has forgot has forgiven because she was more interested in Amy Pascal's mental health following what happened. So going back to the article here, it says, uh, Amy expressed interest in being involved with The Bride of Frankenstein, and just as the studio is done with numerous other filmmakers, we empowered her to implore a new vision for the monster, a uh, universal monster character, and come back with a new and inventive take. Nothing solidified uh, in any cap official capacity. Reps for Pascal and Jolie have declined to comment. Universal has also had no comment. So, okay. She's going back to David Kep, who wrote who wrote the original story that Bill Condon was going to work on. I'm assuming the, the, the tale of liberation, right, uh, coming in from a female character, a female monster and not wanting to be like, you know, the, the love slave of a of, of, a, of, a, of another monster is going to, you know, ring pretty well with with Pascal, considering that, uh, you know, she uh, she gave us Ghostbusters 2016, right? A film here. Yeah, it was certified fresh with 74 percent. The audience clearly didn't care for it. The uh, the movie went on to gross only two hundred and twenty nine million dollars worldwide off of a hundred and forty four million dollar budget and was one of the key contributors to Sony having to write down almost a billion dollars in 2016 because of the failed movie business. When I talk about Sony and how they can't run franchises, a lot of that has to do with Tom Rothman and Amy Pascal. There's literally no other way to describe it. They are the people that are responsible for Sony not being a good place, even though Tom Rothman, I would say, is maybe potentially trying right now, but I don't know how well it's working. But that being said, look, Amy Pascal is in a position to reinvent her career, and her career took a dive after the 2014 email hack. Her, 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 her legacy at Sony as co-chair was tarnished. She ended up basically securing the deal with uh, Kevin Feige for Spider-Man. That saved her ass. She was able to then produce. She did produce uh, Little Women, which, you know, was a movie that was uh, lauded for being snubbed at the Oscars. And it's one, again, female empowerment, female story. Bride of Frankenstein kind of feels like this is what she's going to go and do. Uh, and she's got to now claw her way back and doing a low budget horror movie about female liberation in the form of being a monster could be something that would be socially interesting to watch. Because after we saw the success of Joker, which talked about mental health, society forgetting people who uh, aren't rich and the rich looking down to the poor, class warfare stuff and how how well that did. The Bride of Frankenstein, to some extent, is actually uh, primed to tell a very similar story from the female perspective. And I think that if done well, if done socially current and told uh, appropriately, could resonate with box office uh, with the box office very, very, very well. And that is something you could probably see she's aiming to do. My fear with this, though, is that David Kep is not someone who I think is that good of a writer. And I think like, you know what? He's also working on the new Indiana Jones movie. He wrote the last Indiana Jones movie. Let's, uh, you know what? Let's, no. All right, let's get some fresh blood in there, right? Why don't we, this is the thing. She's working with David Kep to write this story. Honestly, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to say it. Hire a woman to tell a story about female liberation. I'm, look, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm wrong on that one. I, I do believe in meritocracy. I do believe if you have the best idea, let it come forward, but I already know the kind of salt that's going to flow from the media if 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 this moves forward and it's it's a story about female liberation from from Bride of Frankenstein and uh and it's written by a man. 
right? I'm just saying it's like, don't bring in Christina Hodson. She's a terrible writer. She's she screwed up Bumblebee and Birds of Prey. You know, get rid of her. But find someone else who could actually write a story about that and 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 do it well. I'm just I'm just saying that's my take. You call me an SJW you want, I don't care. But I think a story like this can only really be told from a woman's perspective. And that's something that I just as a human would prefer to see. You know, I mean, if I'm, I'm a writer, you, you know, would anyone want to see me write a book uh, or write a screenplay about the struggles of growing up in the hood? I would not have anywhere. I, I would not be able to tell you something that is very personal because I grew up in the suburbs of Portland and then later the suburbs of San Diego and then the suburbs of Los Angeles. Right. My my experiences are not that. But if you want to know the story of a geek who found out ways to get into any convention he wanted to go to and had a lot of fun doing geeky stuff, then I'm the dude. But until then, I'm not the same person. You know, I, that's what I'm trying to say. That's all I'm trying to say there. I might be over explaining it, but uh, anyway, that's those are my thoughts on it. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm curious to see if Pascal can have a redemption arc. I'm curious to see if she can claw her way back into to the good graces of Hollywood. They, they have supported her, um, but her leaving Sony going to Universal and, and it, it, this being like the first project she's kind of like, touched upon i think um it goes to show you that things aren't necessarily going that well and yeah we'll have to wait and see what happens but anyway i want to hear your thoughts i want to hear your opinions let me know down in the comments below i will talk to you guys all later have yourself a great day thank you for watching and peace out